Jonah chapter 2. Jonah chapter 2, we are weeding our way through Jonah. This Jonah looking in a, on a series, in the middle of a series, on obedience. On obedience. I want to make sure I get on the same page here with these gentlemen in the back. Uh, we're good to go. You have a signal. All right. Uh, we also, the church, this church also does have a YouTube channel. If, if you're, again, if you use that, some, some of the older folks, other, you just, some people don't. But if you do, if you're on there, the church does have a channel, and uh, most of our sermons are on there, and also on Sermons Audio. But download the app. You can listen to every sermon for the last probably two or three years on there, just about every one of them. So it's a ministry that uh, Brother Dave Backshider, Brother Dennis, and the guys are involved in. And uh, so thank you, gentlemen, for doing that. It's a lot of work, a lot of work to upload some of that stuff and then edit, <laughs> to edit it. Edited. Jonah chapter 1, or Jonah chapter 2, if you find your place, we'll be looking at Jonah's prayer. This is a prayer that we will dissect and look at and just make application to ourselves. And we've been learning a lot from Jonah. We fit, we have put ourselves in his position, and we, uh, we, we, a lot of this goes hand in hand with you and I today as a Christian on a disobedience with Christ. How does Christ, our God, handle that situation? And then what we learn from it looking at this Found here in Jonah chapter 2. Let's read Jonah chapter 2, about verses 1 through, through 9 or 1 through 10 there. If you found your place, it says, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly, and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Uh, let's see, uh, I lost my place there. And he heard me, out of the belly of, the, of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice, for thou hast cast me into the deep, and in the midst of the sea and in the floods compassed me about all the billows, and all thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about even to the soul, and the death closed around about me, the weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottom of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that thou I have uh, vowed, Salvation is of the Lord, and verse 10, And the Lord spake unto the, fi unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon dry land. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bow before you this evening again. We do thank you for this opportunity, another year to uh, serve you. And Father, these, uh, these times together on a cold uh, midweek service, Father, we pray that uh, the hearts would be warm inside, the mind would be attentive to your word. Be with me, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And uh, Father, we thank you for your word and what you've done in the past, what you're doing now, and what you're going to do in the future. We thank you for everything you've given us. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Here, just for a few, uh, a, a few moments here, we're going to look at this prayer that Jonah began to pray. As we've been following this, finally the mariners in this, in this, uh, uh, this story here in Jonah, they throw him overboard. The sea stops from her raging in the great fish, swallows Jonah at the command of the Lord. You'll notice there in verse 17 of chapter 1, it says, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. We had went to Matthew chapter 12, I believe about verse 40, where uh, Jesus was giving a sign to the Pharisees, and he says, uh, As Jonas was in the belly of the well three days and three nights, and uh, so shall the Son of Man also be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And we looked at the type last Wednesday, if you remember. And so tonight, we're going to look at what Jonah is saying out of this whale's belly, or this great fish's uh, belly. But uh, before we get started, we're going to look at some principles and, and, and compare. But let me say this, now I'll stick with my notes. Prayer is not the Christian's good luck charm. We see that a prayer is immediately offered here. Now, we notice in the past, uh, when he was sleeping in the bottom of the ship, Jonah was not praying. Matter of fact, the ship's master had went down unto him and, and, and said, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise and call upon that God. Pray, man. We need help. We're going to die. But he wasn't in a prayer mood then. 
uh, when he bought the fare from, uh, from uh, went down to Job to buy the fare to Tarshish, he wasn't praying about it. He had just heard from the word of the Lord to go into Nineveh and to preach and to pray, uh, pray uh, for Nineveh, preach to it, if you please, because their wickedness was great and had come up before the Lord. And so he wasn't actually praying about that either. But here we find that after the well has swallowed him, that he, uh, he is ready to pray. He's ready to pray to God. And I'm, I'm sad to say, I've, I've been there. You go and go, and you, your prayer life is in shambles. And then when the well swallows you, when you're in a predicament that you don't think you can get out of, or you can't see the light at the end of the tumble, tunnel, if you please, then you begin to pray. Well, uh, this is why we say prayer is not the Christian's good luck charm. It's important uh, that God's people, that uh, God's people be faithful in good times, in good times as well as in the bad. Uh, you know, when we turn a deaf ear to God, uh, in the good times, we shouldn't be surprised when God turns a deaf ear to us in the bad times. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 28 says this, Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me, for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Obedience, obedience, and that's really what we've summed this up, this lesson on obedience, is a 24-7 project. Obedience is a 24-7 project. You don't reach a certain status in your Christian life and think, well, obedience is over. Obedience is never over as long as you're living here on this earth in this body. Obedience is a 24-7 project. Uh, God is pleased with the consistent faithfulness not simply when we are in a bind. Not when we're just in a bind. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So he admonishes you and I, or the Christian, or brethren and sistren, to be steadfast, unmovable. And here we see in Jonah that he was definitely not neither one of those. But he finds himself in this great fish's belly, and he's praying to God. He's praying to God. Number one, we see some principles here. We see an affliction-driven principle. Notice with me in verse 2 of chapter, chapter 2. An affliction-driven principle. He says, and said, this is Jonah now, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, and thou heardest my voice. He, uh, you know, he was, he was in a well's belly. He's probably the only man today alive in a well's belly. I don't know, but he's praying to God. But he says he cried by reason because of where he was at, where he found himself. That's why he was praying and crying out to God. You know, I asked the question, does it take some crisis for you to find a place on your knees? Sometimes it does for me, and it's sad, it's a sad state, but it takes, seems like the wills to fall off of life before you begin to pray or cry out to God. Here, this is what Jonah is doing. Now, we know the end of the story. God's listening to him. We're, we're not debating or arguing that or teaching on that. God's listening, but it's a sad state that uh, he's crying by his reasons of affliction. Daniel, I think of a man in, in the Bible, Daniel, Daniel chapter 6, uh, he was a consistent man. He was a young man when he was taken into captivity into Babylon, but he was a consistent man. We find a verse in Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, says, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, you see, uh, he was set in a certain position in that kingdom, along with other princes and authorities. And those other princes and, and, and other uh, uh, governors didn't like him because he prayed to uh, God. He was a Hebrew. And so they were intimidated and they didn't like it. So they set about setting a law into motion and having the king sign it that would, uh, that would cause only anybody, if they were to pray, to pray to that king. Not to God, but to the king only. And so we see here in Daniel... It says, but when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, that he wasn't allowed to pray to his God, basically, he went into his house, and in his windows being opened, in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, watch the little phrase, as he did aforetime. 
it wasn't something that Daniel thought, well, now that there's a law that I'm not allowed doing it, and I'm half rebel anyway, I'm going to go against that law. He had always prayed. He was a consistent man. He had always prayed to his God three times a day. And he wasn't going to let that law affect that relationship that he had with God. This is the opposite character that you find in Jonah. Jonah wasn't praying. He was only praying by reason because of where he was at. And so uh, you say, well, what's, what's our point? Our point is to be consistent, to be a consistent Christian, especially in our prayer. Uh, as we did aforetime, a consistent prayer life is important. Speaking of a rebel, I'm reminded of another gentleman in the Bible, Samson, in Judges chapter 16. Uh, I, I noticed something about his prayer when I was studying prayers through the Bible, looking at what Jonah, what was recorded of Jonah's prayer here. But Samson had a prayer, and he was affliction as a powerful motivator. Affliction is definitely a powerful motivator to pray to God. Don't get me wrong. And a lot of times, God will bring affliction into our lives, trials, uh, storms, if you please, to get our attention to correct our path. Uh, and so here, but in Judges 16, 28, it says, O Lord God, this is Samson speaking to God, remember me. I pray thee and strengthen me. I pray thee only this once, O God, that I be, be at once avenged of the Philistines for my eyes. He wanted revenge because the Philistines had taken his eyes, his eyesight, and he wanted to avenge them. Now, the Lord had already prophesied that Samson was going to be a judge, a judge for the nation of Israel against the people around Israel that was afflicting them. And at that point, God granted his prayer, gave him his strength, and he judged the Philistines that day. And, uh, and, and, and God answered his prayer. But you notice his prayer was all avenged about giving him strength, about avenging himself. It wasn't for the glory of God, it was for himself. So you find many different prayers in the Bible. Uh, maybe not model prayers, but you find them nonetheless. And so we don't want to fall in the category of a motivated rebel, avenging yourself of something that you're caught up in because you've got yourself in it. Kind of like we said about Jonah in Jonah chapter 1, he created this storm that has put him in uh, the, the belly of the well, if you please. I understand God sent the storm, but because of Jonah's disobedience, God's ringing his bell. And so Jonah, you find, we find Jonah here in the, in the, in the belly of the well, praying by reason of his affliction to his God. It's not that he's wavering in his faith to God. It's not that he's doubting that God doesn't have the ability or the power to, to save him. He knows he does. Matter of fact, if you look at the prayer, he's not doubting God. Uh, he's maybe doubting himself and rethinking about what he did. But uh, nonetheless, it's, uh, we, it's a unique prayer. Let's move on here. Not only do we see that uh, he's in a position uh, as a rebel or a motivated, have his own motivations because he wants to live, but we see a reward here. A miserable reward. Uh, there is pleasure in sin for a season, the Bible says. Take your Bible. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 11. I know we're, we're kind of parked out in Jonah, but let's, let's put some verses in here. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25. This is about Moses. Looking at the pleasures of sin for a season, notice what it says here in the, the Hall of Fame, Hebrews chapter 11. Notice with me in verse 24, by, by faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Uh, folly is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom, but a man of understanding walketh uprightly. That's Proverbs chapter 15. Listen, the Bible always admonishes the Christian to walk uprightly, to be steadfast, and uh, to choose not to go down this disobedient path. Uh, whatever price Jonah was unwilling to pay when God asked him to preach to Nineveh now seems pretty meager in comparison to the cost. 
uh, to the cost of his disobedience. And so you see this in verses 3 and 6, back in Jonah chapter 2. And we're speaking of uh, what he's actually paying, what, what is actually costing him, if you please. Verse 3, I'm back in Jonah chapter 2, he says here, For thou hast came, uh, cast me into the deep, in the midst of the sea, and the floods uh, compassed me about, all thy billows and thy waves passed over me. When I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about even to the soul. The depths closed me around about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. Man, what description, what description he's able to describe, how he's feeling, where he's at, what is going on here. Notice with me, verse 6, I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. He was not doubting God had the ability to raise him back up, and that's exactly what happens. But uh, here he's praying. He's praying, and we're, we're, I know I understand we're a little rough on Jonah when we're looking at his prayer. Why is he praying this? Uh, the reason for his prayer, you know, well, he's in a well's belly. Uh, I would be praying too, even if I didn't believe in God. I believe in God, but man, I, if I was alive in a well's belly and still consciously know that I was alive, I would be praying. I'd be praying. That's, that's what you find him doing. And you probably wouldn't be down. I don't know if there's a God or not. You'd say, God, save me. And uh, that's what he's doing pretty much here. But secondly, we not, uh, well, let's look at something else. We see the prayer, adversity, adversity-driven prayers. Now, we, we call this crisis from a foxhole. Take your Bibles, turn to Psalms. And we're going to get into this. Now, don't, don't get me wrong now. I'm not, the signal I'm sending is where he's at and why he's praying. Uh, people pray for many different reasons, and I'm not going to analyze a lot of that tonight, but we have this prayer recorded, we have Bible to back it up, and we have Bible to go along with what we're going to look at tonight. Psalms chapter 69, verses 1 through 5. If there ever was a, a, a prayer from a foxhole, this was it. This was David speaking here. Psalm 69, notice with me, in verses 1, he says, Save me, O God, for the waters are come in unto my soul. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dried. Mine eyes fell while I wait for my God. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. They that would destroy me, being mine enemies wrongfully, are mighty. When I restored that which I took not away, verse 5, O God... Thou knowest my foolishness, and my sins are not hid from thee. Man, if that's a prayer, that's a prayer. And that's what's going on. I put that down as cries from a foxhole, and that's David. There he's going through a hard time. Adversity-driven prayers. Have you ever prayed a diversity-driven prayer? I have. I have. And we're looking at one tonight. So uh, we see David's prayer, but we see something else here. Concern from a father. Notice with me in verse 7. Uh, uh, notice that uh, here, here he says something that's, I think, uh, interesting. In verse 7, Jonah chapter 2 now, back to our text. Jonah chapter 2, look at verse 7. He says, When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. He knew that God always heard his prayer. And he, remember, he said he remembered the Lord. Diversity or adversity, not diversity, adversity, brings the thought of God back into remembrance. Uh, it's, it's, it's one of those things about adversity. And so we see it, this is a definitely an adversity-driven prayer. But uh, we, uh, we see something else here. You know, God sometimes puts us in the dark to prove that He is light. And, I, and, and you got to catch this in this. I don't want to just talk about Jonah's prayer one way, but, you know, a lot of times, like I said, God will send a storm or a trial into our life to test us, to try us, to purify us, if you please. And so uh, God sometimes puts you and I in dark places just to prove or to show that He is light. I think of Micah 7 and Isaiah 43. I'll tell you what, let's grab Isaiah. Take your Bibles and turn to uh, Isaiah. 
We're going to Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, 25. I like this. This is a verse you can underline and, and, and memorize. Isaiah, we want, Isaiah 43, verse 25, it says this, I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake, and will not remember thy sins. I like that. And this is, this is God. You say, well, what's God's part in this prayer? Listen, you always, you always, whether it's an adversity-driven prayer, whether it's by reason of your crying, you find yourself in a circumstance and you're crying to God, kind of like a spare tire type thing. God, you have a heavenly Father that is there and He's listening and He's able and willing to work in that situation. You say, but He doesn't answer right now. Well, it, to, yeah, I understand He was in the belly of the well three days and three nights. But uh, you, we, we did read that the well did vomit Him up uh, onto dry land. He didn't have to swim. How about that? So, I mean, there's perks to that. God can answer prayer, and he was alive. But here, I like this in Isaiah 43, 25. God never try, tires, God never tires of true repentance. Uh, I think of Psalms. I've used this before. I, I really like this Psalm. Psalms 51. Psalms 51. You might be familiar with this. Psalms 51. Notice with me in verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, thou will not despise. Listen, you say, do you think Jonah was there? I think Jonah probably was there. I, I don't think everything he said might not have been true, but he was, listen, it's a diversity-driven prayer period about it, but God was listening, and uh, God, God spares him and gives him a second chance. But uh, you look at Psalms, although we don't have time to get into Psalms 51, but you read down through that's a broken and contrite heart that God won't refuse. Thirdly, we see that we have some promises. Avoid, avoidance, or uh, uh, we have some promises. Let me look at it. Verse 9. Let me get back to Jonah. Verse, uh, verse 9. Let's look at verse 9. Jonah chapter 2, verse 9. He says here, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that I have vowed salvation is of the Lord. Now, he is, he, is, he is saying here that he's going to uphold his vow. You know, when we make a promise or promises to God, we must make sure that we have every intent to keep them. That's why you will hear a pastor, hear ourselves, be careful when you vow a vow to God or you make a promise to God because God will make sure you uphold that. Uh, so we need to be very careful with that. Promises made to simply escape punishment are not pleasing to the Lord. This is kind of what we're getting to. Uh, Jonah does go to Nineveh and he preaches and Nineveh repents. It's one of the greatest times you see so many people repent and turn to God. And so we call him one of the greatest evangelists uh, that, that you'll read about in the scripture. And so here, what I'm simply saying is, if you're making a promise just to simply escape punishment, God's not pleased with that. Make sure you keep your promises and your vows to God if you make them. And so we see here the promises, but we see a careful voice. And we begin to think about Jonah, and the question is, do you think that Jonah was really thankful? Uh, he wasn't very thankful in chapter 1, as we notice this story begins to unfold. And it says, the word of the Lord came unto uh, uh, Jonah, the son of Amittai, and he says, listen, I want you to go to Nineveh and, and preach against it, preach, preach to them. And so he didn't say nothing. He just went down to Joppa, took a fare, paid a fare to go to Tarshish. It was the opposite way. I was looking at a map today at school. I was kind of fumbling around in my Bible looking at that. It's the opposite way where he should have went. And so we see here, was he really thankful? Chapter 1, he wasn't. And uh, you notice in, by uh, chapter 4 now, he gets past this crisis, this versity. In chapter 4, he's not very thankful in chapter 4. So what is motivating this sudden gratefulness? I'm reminded of this verse in James, James chapter 5, verse 12. Let your yea be yea, and your nay be nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. Uh, you know, we need to be careful with the words we speak and the promises we make, especially to God. God will hold you to your word. 
because he expects us to hold him to his word. And uh, by the way, we, a lot of everything we believe in consists of what God's word says. And so God knows he's got to hold his end up. So he's, he's definitely looking for you and I. Um, I'm, I'm speaking to the category to, as a Christian person here dealing with God in the relationship that a Christian has with God. Listen, be, be serious about it. Be consistent. Let your yea be yea and your nay, nay, it says. So we see here a continued vow. Uh, God takes our vows seriously. Let me show you how seriously, and I'm watching the clock here, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, while we have time, I want to spend uh, some verses on this. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 21, and we'll just get a glimpse of what God said. You say, well, this is the Old Testament. Yeah, and you're not going to find a verse that where God changes his mind on how he feels about this. If you do, you'll find it'll be clear. It'll be, uh, well, it, may, it might even be in red. But here, here, here's his view on vows and promises. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 21. He says, When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it. For the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee, and it would be a sin in thee. And so you think, Wow. So if you don't do what you tell God you're going to do, it could be yes. And so uh, we looked at this, this vow, how serious he is. It is very serious. God takes it serious. A certain victory. Now I'm going to move. I'm going to move. We're back in Jonah. Flop back over to Jonah. I know we're doing some flip-flopping tonight. Jonah chapter 2 in verse 9. Notice with me again in verse 9. There's something else here, a victory about this. He says here, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that, that I have, that's two that's there, that, that I have vowed salvation is of the Lord. And so we see this may be the only really true phrase uttered in the entire prayer here. When you analyze this, and I'm talking studying and looking at it, uh, if victory comes, it can come no other way but through the Lord. Not through the power of our might or something that we muster up or when something goes good or God answers prayer and says, well, you know, I did do this, I did do that. Listen, God did it. God works it out and he's not one for sharing, sharing the glory because it belongs, it belongs to God. Uh, when things like that happen in our life, God answers our prayer. So we see a certain particular uh, victory and uh, let me give you this verse, Psalms 37, let me read this. He says, but the salvation of the righteous is of, of the Lord. He is their strength in the times of trouble. Jonah knew this. Jonah knew that God had the power to deliver him, and that's what happens. Uh, I'm reminded of Paul. There's a shipwreck in Paul's life. He's in the right frame of mind spiritually. He's right with God. He, God's already told him he's headed to Rome, but he's in a shipwreck. And when you notice that he has the peace of God in this shipwreck, you find that in Acts, about Acts 27. But you notice there's other men that go through this type of situation and they have God on their side. And you listen and you watch their prayer and how do they handle themselves. And it's different, it's quite a bit different than uh, what we find here for Jonah. Nevertheless, with that, with what we're saying here, let me say this, a short prayer can reach God if you don't live too far away. Here, Jonah finds himself down as far as you can get where he's at in a well's belly. He thinks he's not going to ever see the light of day, and he's making a prayer of sacrifice of thanksgiving to God, saying, listen, I will pay what I have vowed. And God says, okay. And so you see in verse 10 there in Jonah chapter 2, and the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon dry land. He said, okay. Notice with me in verse 1 of chapter 3. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. He's not going to tell him what he said. He already knew what he was supposed to say. And so I find it ironic. God is a God of second chances. He was watching. He knew what was going on. And he finally, Jonah says, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll pay what I, what, what I said I would. And he knew that salvation, he finally said that salvation is of the Lord. Tonight, salvation is of the Lord. You know, if you've never accepted Christ, most of you maybe have here, I don't know. I don't know every heart here. But if you've never accepted Christ, listen, there will come a time in your life when you're down, when life has put you down, and you have nowhere to turn. 
And you're going to remember the Lord. You're going to remember the preaching. You're going to remember the verses. You're going to remember something, maybe a hymn, an old hymn, a piece of hymn, maybe something your mom or your dad has said to you, and you're going to remember, and it's going to say, and it's going to ring in your mind, salvation. God can save me. That's, that's, what, that's, that's God's MOS. God saves people. And you're going to want to turn to God. Listen, you don't have to wait until you're in the well's belly, down in the bottomless pit, looking at hell, if you please, to realize that you need a Savior. You can accept Him tonight. That's what we're preaching about. Listen, you don't have to go through what Jonah went through. Listen to the Word and heed what the Bible is saying. Tonight, today, today is the day of salvation. Christian, listen. We think we have it all figured out. We think we're good because we got our fire insurance paid for and we're on to glory. But if something that God has pricked your heart about to do or not do, you need to get it right. Because there, Jonah's not the only one <laughs> that can find himself in a well's belly. Uh, God can get people and ring people's bell, the bell in their life uh, very easily. So don't wait until all that happens. Listen to God. Heed to God. Heed to the Holy Spirit. Let's all stand tonight. We'll end there. I know I've been a little lengthy, and we've looked at a lot of verses and analyzing this, and I don't mean to be uh, crazy with this uh, Jonah's prayer, but there's a lot in there. And we don't have to get in the situation that Jonah found himself in because we have a God that is willing, willing to answer our prayer and come to our help and our aid in a moment of adversity. Pastor.